Hey, this is Jim Nix from NomadicPursuits.com and thanks for joining me in this video. I'm going to give you a highlight tour of some of the new features and just kind of walk through some processing steps with this image in the new Aurora HDR 2017 from MacFun. It's an amazing product as I said in my last video and hopefully that gave you a sense of what the product can do for you. I'm going to take you through this now and just kind of show you some other things. So this is a three exposure HDR. You can see the information here. It was shot in Venice at Blue Hour. My daughter and I were out gunning brackets into the sunset and it was awesome. And uh, in this case, I'm gonna take you through some of the tools here and then also talk about some presets and maybe some textures. So as I showed you in the last video, this tone mapping section has been expanded and it's, it's really excellent. You can move these things around. They're, they're simple sliders. I like Smart Tone quite a bit. If you take a look at how, how that impacts the photo, you can really make a lot of changes to your base photo without really even applying a preset. So let me just kind of show you. There's the before and there's the after. So that's just kind of a sample. Um, it's something I've been experimenting with on just about all the photos that I've been processing in the 2017 edition. And I think the tone mapping section here is just awesome. I think you're going to love it. So let me reset that. The other thing is a polarizing filter. I think I showed you that in the last video. As you can see here, just drag it to the right and it gets darker. Now I am using JPEGs so that it's a little snappier here in the video. That's why you're going to see some of this pixel, pixelization and, and stuff in the sky. So let me hide that, but I just wanted to show you how that works. And the other one that I love is top and bottom adjustment. Uh, it used to be called top and bottom lighting, but it's been adjusted now because it's more than lighting. As you can see, it's exposure, contrast, vibrance, and warmth separated by top or bottom. So in this case, I'd probably darken the sky a little bit, maybe give it a little more vibrance, maybe a little bit more warmth, just to give it a little bit more of that sunset kind of golden hour look, something like that. Uh, and of course, just like in the previous version, you can shift the, uh, the sort of the blend and the shift and the orientation. You can move those around to get it looking just how you want to. So that's a, a quick tour of a couple of the uh, new features here, and I think you've probably seen that before. Let me show you a few presets. There's a lot of categories. Uh, we've got the same categories as before. Basic has, as the name implies, a lot of basic presets. I, I'm a fan of, of somewhat saturated images, so I like these vivid kind of looking ones, like this realistic vivid. And uh, there's another one I like, this dreamy. And often what I do is I'll just take, on different layers, I'll just take portions of these presets and blend them in using the, uh, the adjustment brush, right? And uh, I'm sure you've seen me do that in previous videos. In the realistic HDR category, there's a number of ones here that I like. I'm a fan of Happy Day, and uh, it's just kind of happy, right? It's a great little uh, little one. Here, New Emotions is pretty cool. There's some interesting names. Not quite as interesting as the ones uh, that Trey comes up with. His are pretty funny. Uh, Vivid Memories is a great one. A little saturated, but something I do a lot is use a luminosity mask, and I'll show you that here in a moment as well. Uh, uh, landscape, dramatic, they're all good. Trey's got a lot of uh, cool presets. Um, one that I like a lot is, uh, let me find it here. Uh, the names are crazy, right? Peanut Butter Blowout. I mean, I don't, I don't know what he's doing, but this one's cool. And an emoji for schadenfreude, if I even said that right, and chocolate fixes most problems. Here's another example of that. A little sketchy in the water here, but overall nice preset. Whoops, I applied that, didn't mean to. Let me go to Captain Chemo. He's got a number here of uh, presets that I like. I like this color structure. I think that's a nice look in this photo. And he lives in Florida, so he takes a lot of uh, ocean-type uh, HDRs, and they're beautiful if you haven't followed his work. Uh, Rocking Ocean, I think, is cool. And this Waterway preset is pretty cool as well. And then the last of my little preset tour here is Serge Ramali, or Photo Serge. Dot com. If you haven't seen his uh, his blog, you should check it out. It's got some great stuff. Uh, Photosair's Basic is a nice one. I like this clouds. It's nice and smooth. I love doing that. And if you look in here, you can see he applied a lot of super smooth and the denoise to smooth out some of those uh, those areas. And it's something I do in a lot of my uh, images anyway. So this glowy night looks pretty sweet. And I like this sunset look. He did something here that I'm a big fan of, and that is... He moved the temperature to the right and the tint to the right. So you, you warm up the image and at the same time you give it more of the tint that kind of errors on that sort of pinkish side. So it really does give that sunset glow and that's something I do a lot. So uh, great, uh, great preset there. So that's really it on my preset tour. 
Let me show you a couple of other things. I think I just added Photosaris's preset. Let's just leave it there. Uh, another thing you can do is luminosity masking. I always do that on a new layer. So let me just add a new layer. And uh, if you saw my last video, you know that you can't just add it here by doing a drop down menu, but you can do it here based on zones. And you just click the zone based on the uh, available light in the photo. The zones are numbered from zero to 10 and from darkest to lightest. So as you're clicking these zones, you're basically choosing areas of the photo that correspond to certain light levels. And then you just hit create luminosity mask. So this mask will then be applied based on the zones that I've chosen in the luminosity mask panel that sits on top of the uh, histogram here. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, you can also get to the luminosity mask creation uh, area by clicking on the brush and then clicking on luminosity mask over here. And I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, let this luminosity mask get built and then uh, I can show you another cool feature and that is that you can actually go in and erase parts of the uh, luminosity mask with the uh, with the adjustment brush. So now the mask is built. Let me uh, let me just say that's a little too warm and I'm just messing with the colors here. So let's take this back down this way but uh, let's look at the before and after. There's the before, there's the after. Let's say that I like I built a luminosity mask without any adjustments. Now I just made some temperature and tint adjustments to take away some of that pink. But let's say that I really liked it in the sky. So I can just take my brush, left bracket will shrink it, and right bracket will increase it. So let me shrink it a little bit. And this is the eraser, that hollow circle. I can just go wipe the eraser over this layer and that luminosity mask is being pulled out of there. So then the original layer, which has the um, photo series preset on it is now coming through. And so I basically just removed the luminosity mask from that portion of the image, right? So that's giving me back, and, and by the way, that wasn't at full opacity, here we go. So I can do it at full opacity, and now you can see that I'm completely removing, and I'm doing this kind of rough, I'm not, you know, I'm just kind of skirting around the edges here, but I'm doing it 100%, let me just finish that up, there you go. So that gives you an idea. Let me hide the mask so that you can actually see what I'm talking about. And there you go. So I basically brought the sky from the previous layer and made it visible here after applying a luminosity mask and making color adjustments. So it sounds like a lot of gobbledygook, but the truth is you can just mess around with this stuff until you get the image looking at the way you want it to look. So I'm going to reset the image completely and I'm going to go do something different and that is I'm going to add a texture now. So let me show you that. You just come over here, add a layer, click custom texture, I'm going to grab this, uh, what am I going to grab? Let's try this. I don't really remember what I was using. No, you know what? It's not that. That, that was too much. Let me go get a te different texture. I think it was this one. Here we go. This is a cool texture. This looks good on a Venetian image. So let me bring that up. See that? It's kind of fun. So as you know, when you load a texture on a layer, it's going to lay on top of the previous layer and it's going to be at 100% opacity. In other words, all you're going to see is the texture. So I always drag the opacity down so you can get a better view of the photo with the texture sort of overlaid. So 34%, I can see it pretty well. And here's the thing is like, I like the texture, but I don't want the texture as intense on the buildings. So I'm going to take the opacity down to about 50%, right? 50 right there. And I'm in the eraser, which is this hollow yellow circle. And I'm just going to Kind of wipe that across this. I'm going to right bracket key to increase the size of my brush. And I'm just going to drag this guy around in here to remove some of that texture. Left bracket key to shrink it. And I'm going to take some of that texture out of that area too. So you can see the mask here. Let me, I can just show you the mask if you like. That's what the mask looks like. You can see I've hit it a little harder in some parts than I have in others. So I'll just come back through. And because there's that low opacity, if I keep going over it, I'll eventually get to 100% opacity, which means the entire uh, bottom layer will show through. So there's a texture added to this photo. And I think that looks pretty cool. That, uh, I think, yeah, Burl Grunge. It, this is just a texture I got off of a, uh, a website for free. And uh, I think it looks great on the photo. I think it goes well with Venice. And now often what I do is I'll just take the, the colors and start sort of playing with them. I think that's kind of fun. In fact, you know what? I meant, let me reset that. Um, I want to do that on a new layer. So I'm going to add an adjustment layer. And then I'm going to come over here 
and bump up these colors and the saturation a little bit. And look at that, right? It's a completely different image. Let me show you where we started. That's a single exposure from one of the three exposures that made up the bracket set that formed the base HDR. And there we are now. And so that's just a, I don't know, this is maybe five, eight, ten minutes or something. Uh, I've already showed you luminosity masking, presets, adding textures, doing custom brush adjustments. There's so much you can do in Aurora 2017, just like you could in the previous version, but it's even faster and it's better and it's, uh, especially the luminosity masking is much more uh, capable and flexible now. But I think that's a super cool looking image and uh, that was just a couple of minutes of work. You know what else you can do? You can just go add a new adjustment layer and stick a preset. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm gonna go get a realistic HDR preset and maybe I'll get this Vivid Memories and it's gonna be really intense, I'm sure. But we can adjust that. There you go, that's pretty intense. Let me show you where we were. There we were, and then there it is. So you can adjust it with opacity, right? Take the opacity down, because zero is, is the layer underneath, effectively. And I like it about like that, so about 45, 40, I'm oh, gonna take that down, maybe more like 30%. I think that's pretty cool. You could also adjust the blend modes. Uh, I'm not sure what this is gonna look like, but there you go, that's not bad actually, and it's at low opacity, so it's not coming through. This color burn might be kind of crazy. Yeah, that's that's actually kind of fun. I might would take that opacity layer down a little bit, but anyway, the point is, between luminosity masks, layers, uh, opacity, sliders, and blend modes, you have unparalleled creativity at your fingertips. You can just sit here and in a few minutes come up with something very unique, interesting, fun, and cool with Aurora HDR 2017. So I know you're gonna be excited about getting it. It's about less than a week until the product comes out. I've been using it uh, every day, literally for a while. Absolutely love the product. There's a ton of videos coming from MacFun that I've been working on with them and I think you're gonna love it and I'm excited about you getting your hands on it and uh, I'm excited that I have my hands on it. So uh, have fun out there. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you next time. Later.